Ancillary material required for packaging includes adhesives, printing inks, reinforcement materials such as tapes and straps, and labels. These materials along with primary packaging materials provide product package compatibility, its protection, and identification by the consumer. Composition-wise, adhesives are polymers, which are capable of, of holding the materials together by surface attachment. They do this by transmitting stress from one member to another in a manner which distributes the stress in a better way relative to the conventional mechanical fasteners. Adhesives used for sticking the labels are of three types, water bond, hot melt and solvent bond. Water bond adhesives are the most common one. They are low in cost and serve the advantage of easy and safe handling. They are of two types, natural and synthetic. Natural water bond adhesives include starch, animal glue, casein and rubber latex. Whereas synthetic water bond adhesives include polyvinyl acetate and resin emulsions. Hot melt adhesives are solid adhesives. They are thermoplastic polymer based and applied when heated in molten state. They are said to form a bond rapidly on cooling and solidification. This is advantageous for higher production rates. The most widely used one is the copolymer of ethylene and vinyl acetate. Solvent bond adhesives are used where hot melt systems and water bond adhesives cannot be used or do not meet the technical requirements. Solvented polyurethane adhesive is a common example under this category. Most solvent based adhesives contain flammable solvents which require proper precautions for safe handling. Once the adhesive is applied, solvent evaporates relatively quickly causing an increase in the viscosity of the adhesive film. Bonds can be made immediately after adhesive application or after some solvent has evaporated but before the adhesive has dried to the point where it will no longer wet. This is called the open time. Waiting for some evaporation prior to bonding which is called as set time increases the initial strength of the adhesive bond and allows assemblies to be processed more quickly. Printing inks not only convey a message and provide identification but also give a decorative effect to the substance on which to the package on which it is used. They may be used on papers, board, plastic, glass, etc. Other than the vehicle and pigment, the printing ink is made up of solvent which helps in dispersing the liquid part of the ink, varnishes and oils which improve the printing performance and additives like plasticizers, surfactants and wetting agents. Now let's talk about different types of printing inks and a few advancements in them. UV and water based inks are known to increase the production speed and decrease the pressure for ecological system in place of conventional systems. The main driving force for the change or using this kind of inks and coating systems is the possibility of printing on a wide range of substrates which was not previously possible to be printed with conventional inks. Toluene free inks are used in flexographic printing process. Flexographic printing technology is growing worldwide. Various ink technologies are now available covering all flexo segments like polyethylene films, plastic films, packaging, etc. The ink manufacturers are constantly improving and adopting the flexo ink technology. One of the significant technology change which is taking place is the shift from toluene based inks to toluene free inks. The toluene free inks are based on alcohol acetate solvent combination. The major reasons for this shift are number one, higher level of solvent retention in the print 
leading to potential residual odor, which is not the case with alcohol acidic system. High risks of migration of toxic impurities, which is avoided using alcohol acetate systems. The occupational exposure limit for toluene is 50 ppm as compared to 400 ppm for ethyl acetate. Other than this, unlike alcohol acetate system, there is very limited ink chemistry possible with toluene and therefore cannot be used in multi-purpose ink series. Flexographic printing, most often called flexo, is a form of relief printing where ink is applied to a raised image on a flexible plate, then impressed onto a substrate. The use of flexo printing has grown in recent years because of improvements in print quality, the capability to print on many different substrates, and the use of environmentally responsible water-based inks. The printing process begins with the artwork which is optimized for flexo printing. The next step in the process is to manufacture a flexible printing plate. This process involves exposing a photopolymer plate to UV light, which will build up the image areas. When completed, the image to be printed will be raised above the base level of the plate. Each color to be used in the art will have its own plate and will be mounted to its own plate cylinder on the press. The Flexo printing press is composed of a number of stations, which corresponds to how many colors can be printed. Label technology can print up to 10 colors in one pass. In each station of the press, there are three rolls. The analox roll, the plate cylinder, and the impression cylinder. The analox roll has a surface made up of tiny cells which carry the ink from a reservoir and place it on the printing plate. The plate cylinder is the roll which the photopolymer plate is mounted to. And finally, the impression roll is what supports the substrate as the ink is transferred from the plate cylinder and impression cylinder to transfer the image. This system of cylinders transfers the ink in each station to the substrate before moving on to the next station with the next color. Each ink transfer must line up exactly in order to print a good quality image. The ink used in flexo printing is fast drying, so the ink dries as the material web moves through each station. Our water-based process inks were developed exclusively for label technology and offer excellent film adhesion, bond strength, and adhesive smear resistance. Ink blending is fully automated for the highest degree of accuracy run after run. We perform pre and post run drawdowns to ensure color standards are approved and then reproducible. For production efficiency, the web width will be maximized through the printing process before going to a secondary process to slit the web to the width required for the type of packaging equipment utilized. One of the more interesting facets of flexo printing is the ability to reverse print artwork. A mirror image is printed on what would be considered the back side of the film. Once printed, the printed film is laminated to a base material and the ink is buried between the layers of film. This method protects the ink from scuffing and keeps it from coming into contact with any of the packaged product. Then comes the universal ink concept. This concept was developed for flexible packaging using gravure or flexo process, either of them. Flexo process we have seen in the video before. To know about gravure printing, there is a video attached in the coming slide. The advantage of universal ink system is that there is very low solvent retention in the print. Thermochromic inks have been developed in context of time and temperature indicators. Now how the thermochromic ink helps in pharmaceutical products? They are organic carbon-based chemicals in the form of special temperature sensitive dyes called leuco dyes. These exhibit a specific color such that subject to a change in temperature, the dyes will change color or become visible. This is due to the molecular structure of leuco dyes altering between two subtly different states, colored and colorless. Labels printed using thermochromic inks can be can help to provide a solution for ensuring integrity of pharmaceutical products. This technology enables a broad range of labels to be produced that are designed to change color or disappear if the product is exposed to a change in temperature. A specific trigger temperature will make the print features disappear or appear when they have been exposed to heat and therefore warn the user that the product may be misused or corrupted. Labels of this kind are employed in instances where products need to be stored 
in controlled environments. Some pharmaceutical products need to be kept cool and if stored at warmer temperatures, the product will be compromised and rendered useless. It's a simple foolproof way of guaranteeing the integrity of the product. Unless you happen to be in the military, know somebody in the military, or possibly work on a military installation somewhere. If you're interested in buying MREs, you're more than likely going to have to go to the secondary market. As the U.S. government property commercial resale is unlawful, notice I mentioned that these aren't supposed to be sold commercially. They're still readily found on places like eBay and Amazon. One of the problems with buying them through those sources is you don't really know the history of what you're buying. If you buy a case of MREs on eBay, hopefully they're going to give you pictures to show you what you're getting. And you'll be able to see the date that it was packed. Most likely that information will be in a date code right here where it says date packed. But the inspection date is usually a little bit easier to read. But even though you know that this one here was packaged on the 300th day of 2011, meaning it's about two and a half years old when this video was made, you don't necessarily know if this was stored in a appropriate way. If it was stored in a cool basement that whole time, which would mean most likely that it's still good. Or you don't know if this might have been stored in the trunk of somebody's car for a couple of months in 90 degree weather. All you can do is take their word for it. They're obviously going to say it was stored appropriately. That's pretty much out of your hand, but one of the few things you can do is if you are buying a case, it's not going to help you when you're buying individual MREs, but with a case, Genuine MRE cases, I don't know if commercial ones do this or not, but the genuine MRE cases, they have this little sticker on here. This is called a time and temperature indicator, or TTI. This one's in pretty rough shape. But this is something they put on MRE cases to give an indication of how well it was stored and what kind of shelf life it has left. It's not a be-all, end-all. I wouldn't base all my MRE decisions on this one little sticker, but it's a helpful little thing. You can see on this graphic from MREinfo.com, which shows it a lot more clear than my little sticker does, that when this is new, it's an orange background with a black circle in the middle. In the middle of that circle, which is orange, will darken over time, and I believe it's also sensitive to heat, so it will darken quicker if the temperature is too high. If the outer circle and the inner circle are the same color, I think you're stretching it at that point. And what you don't want to see is you don't want to see the inner circle darker than the outer circle. It doesn't necessarily mean that the MRE is going to kill you, but it's an indication that they weren't stored properly and that's not something that you are going to want to eat. So like I said, the TTI isn't the only thing to look for, the only thing to go by, and of course on a lot of commercial cases and on individual MREs you're not even going to get that anyway. But if you are buying a case of genuine issue MREs, it's just another method to try and gauge whether a sealed case is worth buying or not. Tapes are used for holding, bundling, sealing, protecting, and color identification. Pressure sensitive tapes are composed of a mixture of resin and elastomer. They are used for closing boxes, protecting labels, holding the documents on the boxes, etc. When hand applying a pressure sensitive label, the separation of the label and the liner is the first and most important step. Ensuring a proper removal, followed by careful application, are both necessary for obtaining proper adhesion. Curl 
put into the label during the removal of it from the liner will contribute to the edges of the label lifting later. This can be minimized by peeling the liner from the label versus peeling the label from the liner. This sounds like a small point of clarification, but is very significant and will allow you to apply a flat label to your substrate. While pressure sensitive materials need no special activating agents to make them adhere, they do have to have pressure applied to properly bond. Labels should be applied to the substrate and then thoroughly rubbed down, paying particular attention to make sure the edges of the label are adhering. Proper liner removal, combined with correct application to the substrate, will eliminate many potential problems and greatly improve label performance. Strapping materials are used in bundling and tying together the tertiary packaging material. This assists in the shipment of goods during the transit. They are categorized as metallic and non-metallic type. The metallic type includes round wires and steel straps. The non-metallic ones include polyester, nylon or polyolefin based strapping materials.